Ghost uh, Magazine welcomes in Doug and Scott from Grinder Blues. How are you guys doing today? Happy Friday. Doing Fantastic. great. First and foremost, I hope you guys are both well. I'm super pumped about the music, but I never want to lose that human thing. Everybody's been mm-hmm. through a lot of stuff, personal, professional, mental. So I hope just everybody is, you know, just as good as possible right this second. I'm doing better than ever. And it's probably because of everything that's going on and everything that's happening in my life. And it's like, it's good. It's, it's a time for um, a cleansing and a brain awakening. So uh, it's, it's, it's been a good thing. Yeah. Doug is uh, always working out and being the studly individual that he is. (laughs) So he's like uh, more healthy than anybody probably in Los Angeles. <laughs> it looks great. I, li- I dig it. I dig it. Uh, definitely this period of time in the world has put stuff into perspective for a lot of people, like what mm-hmm. really matters, not the other, everything else that people think matters or their little problems that seem like a mountain, but actually. Yeah. Really important. So, <laughs> yeah. I always tell people slap me if I complain, literally. <laughs> Right on, right on. I got you. What's the, there's an old cliche that's like, I'd complain, but who'd listen? But I think people listen. People do care. Um, People do care, especially if it's legitimate. But some of us don't have to. Some of us don't need to. You know, there's people, there's way worse going on in the world than the things that we get upset about every day. And I have to deal with that myself, you know. Yeah, you got to micromanage your psyche to, you know, keep your, be grateful for things and all that kind of stuff. I actually think that King's X has a uh, song called Complain, don't you? Or something? Yes. Well, we just, have a lot of things like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we uh, gotta get it off our chest somehow. Scott did it. This, Wait, is, all about, this is about Grinder Blues. Oh, oh hey, man, I wasn't gonna go there songs, until much right? later. So I'm, I'm like, still a good. King's X fan, so whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, of course. <laughs> you know, let's, let's just, like, that's like the 800 pound gorilla in the room is when you have a person with like a legacy career like Doug come and join a project. This is the second Grinder Blues album, El Dose, coming out soon on Metal Blade Records, September 24th. I'm a big fan of that label. They just put out the awesome album from Lee Aaron, who I adore, and we talked to her also. So like we're fans. And, uh, you know, it's tough when you, you know, like the brothers, you guys came in and you have your, your musical vision too. And then Doug comes in and you guys form together but it's true when you have like a legacy person i'm sure that's a constant like swirling thing like doug from king's x in grinder blues i think it's just yeah. like journalists we're very short-sighted not myself but like in general or my brethren my brothers and sisters out there we're very short-sighted we, we literally have the lowest <laughs> hanging fruit of information and we just cling to that shit and i'm really yeah. sorry if that's been all right. no it's all good i mean uh, it's all good yeah, it's all good. And, and like I say, we can talk about Grinder Blues all day long. Um, but we, me and my brother are huge King's X fans. So, I mean, it's it's never a, it's never a problem to talk about King's X or however Doug wants to take that or whatever. It's we're, we, we love all those guys and we love the music. Word. So. Power trios. Awesome stuff. Power Great trios, music. baby. I'm all Gotta about push it. That air. I'm all about it. So, yeah, man, I really love El Dos. I was a fan of the first record. So I was really stoked to, to get my hands on this and talk to you guys. And uh, yeah, what a wonderful record and like a really uplifting record for right now. I don't know if it's all meant to be uplifting. You know, we all have a range of emotions, but again, just coming out of this period of time we've had, I just need some PMA. I need some punk rock positivity. Mm. In my life. <laughs> I like that. P- PMA, punk rock positivity. Yeah. Um, yeah, punk rock, positive mental attitude. I didn't coin the phrase. I think it was. Yeah, great. Thing. That's cool. Uh, well, we made this record be- way before the pandemic. How was it, like, three years ago? I think Easy. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah at, at least three years ago or more, and uh, we did it in Cleveland, Mississippi, where it's the home, of, which is the home of the blues, and it's where uh, there's a there's a plantation right down the road where all the blues players uh, pick cotton at from Muddy Waters, BB King, uh, the Dockery. Yeah, the Dockery, it's called, mm-hmm. and um, so we went down there, and there's this college, a blues college down there that I guess teaches you blues or something. And Miles uh, Fullwider, who produced our record, um, he asked us to come down to make the second record at this college in front of a bunch of school studio uh, students in a state of the art studio that they had at this college. So we went down to do, and we did it in. Uh, just the vibe we went down to the crossroads it was like 10 miles away and uh, i have relatives the bates family my 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 bates family they were at the plantation which is 10 miles away the opposite direction called batesville and my grandmother was born in the indian reservation like a 10 miles the opposite direction so when i got to this town it was like 
when I learned everything was just like, I looked around and go, oh my God, this is like too much. It was so awesome. And growing up with the blues, you know, like, like Scott and those guys playing with the great blues players, I listened to, I listened to blues as a child when uh, in the fifties, when blues was uh, happening in Chicago, when they all moved up there and they started, Chess Records started and all those uh, songs started popping up. And my relatives used to go to the, uh, uh, there'd be this guy would come down from Chicago to the town we lived in, which is 20 miles south of Chicago. And they would sell these records, these 78 records to my relatives. And they were the latest blues records and they'd put them on the record players. And us kids would listen to the music and, you know, and play outside. So. So I really remembering that and all these people that moved up and how the culture changed as a child into the Chicago area, even the accent changed to black people. And then going down there and seeing where all these people came from and knowing that my family came from there, my, my dad's family. It was a, it was really fucking cool. OK, enough. <laughs> no, I dig it, man. Like, you know, come for the, I studied musicology in school. I studied mm -hmm. other, uh, a, a legend of jazz in New York City when I grew up there and everything goes back to the blues. And despite this complicated history of this country, you cannot erase the, the power and the majesty that the purest form of early blues put down and just guided everything. Yeah. Um, but that, what a that's tremendous a, experience for those students. It, it was. The cool thing about it is J-Bo and uh, 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 Scott are both veterans of w have played with some of the greatest blues players around and they know what's up and they're authentic and they're white boys. And I remember when we got together to make a long story short, jumping from all the history of, of Grinder Blues from the last, what, as long as I've known you, um, you know, this is uh, these records we're making. I just thought hooking up with these guys we could really make some really good traditional blues but with a twist because these guys are open-minded you know they're ready to just go for it you know and and we dropped our guitars two steps you know and took the trace ombres approach and just make some fat simple blues up that that was a little bit twisted you know with, with lyrics that didn't go outside the box but my baby left me and just anything that you can just uh, immediately drag on to you know because in the past i'm just used to playing in bands of kxm and king's x there's all this parts and harmonies and blah 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 with this band grand blues it's just simple it's easy we can get up and play right now we can go on tour right now without rehearsing and jam out 45 minutes at least and just rock it out and that's the fun of playing with these guys they're so original so authentic and and easy to work with it took me a while to get used to the brothers, too, because they've been playing together all their lives, as far as I know. And, uh, you know, I had to get used to the nuances and, and find my place within within this thing that they create. It's pretty cool. And it did take long. I mean, Doug's chemistry with our chemistry. I mean, we all listen to the same kind of music and come from the same kind of vibe. So it really I've done a lot of this stuff in that regard, something like that. But when we all three got in the room, it was you know, I hate to throw around the word magic, you know, but it was, it was magical. It was just like, bam. And it was fun. I mean, there's never been a blowout mm -hmm. in the band. There's never been mm -hmm. any, we've been on tours and stuff like that. And everybody gets along good. And, um, you know, like Doug saying, do a 45 minute show. Actually it would probably be a 90 minute show. Cause we break things down and we, we are a jam oriented band where we s extend all of our songs. We'll boogie and, woogie uh, until your eyes roll in the back of your head. <laughs> right. Hey, we gotta do a T-shirt like that. We will yeah, boogie man. boogie until your eyes roll in the back of your head. <laughs> I love it, yeah, man. Absolutely. There's quite a few uh, really great shuffle riffs on the album. I have to say uh, mm -hmm. that I personally—that's like my jam. Personally, we get like a you know the Howlin' Wolf and Muddy stuff that always had like a real groove. Um, you know, yeah. Scott. It's, it's Scott. Kind of Scott knows every blues drum beat that there is and there's many i just learned from him many and he comes up with the you want the new orleans shuffle or you want the kansas city stomp you know and we says you pick one and and scott would just start playing something and me and jabo would just kind of fall in and there it was you know we just morph into a song real quick you know that comes from uh my survival within the blues i was always a rocker or anything like that but being outside chicago and stuff uh jabo got recognized by all the heavyweights as this you know really great 
blues guitar player. And then I was the brother that came in and did the drums. And they don't take, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, they don't take that too lightly. So they will uh, get very aggressive with you. So yeah, I, uh, all my uh, traditional authentic roots are that comes from uh, survival. Because <laughs> if you didn't play it right, if you didn't play it right, man, they would uh, they'd let you know. So yeah. yeah no toms, no symbols. <laughs> yeah, no you don't move. Yeah. ACD, ACD. Lay it down, man. baby. Lay it down. Yep. Did you notice that one of the last few ACDC records was maybe about 10 years ago now? But I think when Phil Rudd was back in the band, there they put a record out and there was no cymbals. It was a kick oh, wow. and a snare. It was like they took one song and just played the same, wrote different songs over the beat. There was no cymbals. There was no nothing lifted. It stayed right on there. It was the weirdest thing. You know, there were wow. some 70s cats that were doing that. Phil Collins, you know, that is so funny you should say that. And I'll tell you this, man. The most legendary, and this is getting away from the blues, stuff like that, but the, you know, probably the most famous drum fill ever is In the Air Tonight. Cha -cha, cha -cha, cha -cha. Mm -hmm. And in that whole song, there's not one symbol. You're right. There's You're no right. hi hat, there's no crash, there's no rides or anything. And um, I actually, out of all the years I've been playing, uh, a student of mine actually said that. I'm like, are you kidding me? And you would think out of that huge drum fill, you know, he would be smashing cymbals and things like that and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, no, man, there's none in that. So, you know, that's that's funny. Yeah, there's producers that do that. Anyways, cool. A little bit of trivia there. Nice. I like it, man. And we're learning stuff today. We're learning stuff today, not just about this record. Um, that's the that's point. Right. That's yeah. the point. That's right. We're always just, Grand Blues Youngins, always education. Learn. Well, uh, there's you more. To, you guys have never had like a blowout or anything, but I always find it fascinating when you have bands with relatives and brothers and stuff because, uh, oh. you know, like you have great brother tandems. Rest in peace, Don Everly and Pantera, those guys, and Van Halen. But then you have like o Oasis <laughs> that gets uh, in the way of the work. Like you know, listen, black, people be Black Crows too. Black Crows. <laughs> those guys didn't talk for years. Yeah, they didn't even talk like through, not even through lawyers. Like, so, I mean, I'm so thrilled that they're back. I was like, this is like, please let this tour continue. Like, I'm so happy, even if we don't get uh, like a lot of new music from them, because I don't know if they're interested, but like, I'm just so thrilled. But yeah, it's got, you know, it's like on one hand- It's really hard, brother, you know, I gotta say, uh, yeah. with record deals and publishing deals and, and things in lawyers and stuff like that, you know, uh, having a partner that close to you it is very, very hard. And the thing is, is that, uh, you know, you go on tour for an extensive amount of time, and then you're supposed to come back and have a family barbecue, you know, and you're, you're, you know, you're just so sick of this dude and he's so sick of you. And <laughs> my brother and I love each other, you know, man, we love each other. We, this time apart is really good for us right now. Um, yeah, we have, uh, we found a groove, you know, we know how to stay out of each other's way and things like that and stuff, but it has, it, uh, it's been a challenge, man. Being in a band with your brother, I don't actually recommend. But after all these years, uh, you know, he's still my brother. And, and we can go on tour tomorrow and we get along and like that stuff. But yeah, it, the music business is hard enough. And when you get somebody that close to you and you're making, there's always that, do you take this deal or don't take this deal? And if your vote was to take this deal and it goes south, then you got that riding over your head. And, there's, a, and there's always the alpha Omega, I mean the alpha male, you know, the big brother, little brother. Yeah, you that's know, true. Little brother trying to outdo the big brother, big brother not appreciating the little brother. And you oh, know, yeah, Dougie. That's you just a natural, Dougie. that's just a natural part of being brothers. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. It's there tough. You know, so I'm glad you recognize that. Nice work. Mm. Yeah. I recently got into the uh, heavily into the Evett brothers and I saw their documentary oh, yeah. about that. Oh, I want to watch it with those guys. Those guys are um, insane, first of all, and then they're, they're so talented. And then there's like a yin yang with them where they really they vibe well, but they also take break, you know, like and their family's very tight, but like, you know, they'll come off the road and be like, All right, I'm gonna go home to the wife. I'll see you in a bit. Like, wow. yeah, but they're good. Yeah. They're really good. They got it worked out and they don't they don't seem super competitive. And they're very both both equally talented. They're equal partners in the band. So. Wow. The Everly, but I'm gonna I'm typing it in because I gotta watch it yeah. when we're done. A, a V E double T, the Abbott brothers. They're kind of like a folk country Americana guy. Oh, I thought you brothers. said oh, I thought you said the Everly brothers. Oh no, no. Uh, no, I mean like I mentioned Don because he just passed. Oh, and oh. Uh, I'm very sad. I'll, about I'll have that. to check that out though. Yeah, but yeah, the Abbott brothers, they're really great. Um, yeah, they're very good. Yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, uh, 
you know, you're speaking of your brother, uh, Scott, like, I don't think there's a guitar solo on this record that's above the 12th fret. I don't, like, you guys talked about, like, this mindset and this real true, tried and true thing, even though it's not strictly a, a blues record, there's a lot of fun things on here. I heard some stuff that reminded me of some 70s stuff, like War and, and uh, Sly, and I heard some yeah. stuff that reminded me of, like, early Chicago, a little, like, it almost could lose it and go into some jazz, mm -hmm. but it didn't just at the you know, restraint, but I love that like there's a freedom on this record and like uh, a really like a real cool sense of musicality and fun. It's not just strictly like here's these riffs and here's this. Oh, oh absolutely. Shit. That is exactly, that's why we did this project. I mean, Doug plays what he wants to play. Jeff plays what he wants to play. I play what and that's the, it's a melting pot of all our influences. And, you know, we have the best vocalists on earth in our band. So uh, it's, uh, I concur. It's unstoppable, you know. But uh, um, yeah, man, there's there's some cool stuff on here. Also, like I said, there's like a really cool the single. I, I was just watching the video earlier that just dropped, and there's like a really cool pan toward the end where it does like an in and out phase shift. You don't hear stuff like that anymore. That's some classic rock stuff. That's like a beautiful recording technique that nobody uses because I think you have to write to be you have to write a quality piece of music that can. <laughs> Wow. Doug, you could chime in on that one, baby. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's like, explain that to me one more time, because I'm trying to figure out what was it that you're talking about? You know, I think it was something Miles might have done at the end. Uh, Miles, uh, he mixed a lot of this record. And uh, yeah, he, you know, he does experiment with things like that uh, on a you know, that's when, you know, me and Doug are sitting on this interview and we don't even know what you're talking about, but I, hey. I'm yeah, because like, you, <laughs> you, you, you were talking about it and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm trying to hear the it? song at the end of, no, I'm trying, no, I'm trying to hear the song at the end of my head yeah. with what goes on and I don't remember. I think it's got to get me some of that because like I said, I just saw the video, which is fun. Right, uh -huh. it is that song. Some it's of that. that song. And yeah, then but toward I, the I, end, there's like a little stereo pan. I hope I got the right song, but there's a, it's so clever and so awesome. cool and it's just unexpected and i love to be surprised like cool the worst thing cool. for me is to be bored as a, as a music reviewer so uh, i want to be surprised and, and pleased well, well you know well, I'm, 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 miles, I'm sure, uh, yeah i'm sure miles or jabo when they were mixing it put that in there and i i i, I might have not even known it yet because i'm still learning the record myself when i listen to it i'm hearing new things all the time you know it takes a while for us to or for me anyway to 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 get a, a project that i'm in when everybody in the band is doing exactly what they want and I had nothing to do with it. I can, I, you know, it's just, you never stop hearing something new from them because it's always, it's from them. And I like that. So that's what I'm learning with this record. Other, other records with that, that I've written the songs of, it's like, I can't even deal with them because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk for a second about hound dogs wearing funny hats on the front cover of an album. You know what? You know what, while we're here, uh, we Wyatt. have a special guest. Oh, yeah, we have a special guest. We have a special guest right here. Oh, who's that? Hey, there he is. Oh, yeah, right oh. there. The supermodel hey, himself. Yeah, man, that's why. There it is. He is the supermodel. Why? Uh, why it's about 16 years old and he can barely see, and he can he can barely see and barely hear. But when he needs some food, he gets up. <laughs> I'm telling you, first of all, the best thing ever happened to this dog is Doug Pack. Okay. And this dog's already died <laughs> and gone to heaven. All right. So it's um, you know, I feed him I'll be good. gone or whatever like that stuff, and then I'll uh um send Doug a picture of Wyatt and this and that and everything like this. And what happened was is uh Thomas uh emailed me or Miles, or pretty much me, I guess. And he's like, man, what are we going to put on the cover of this record? And so uh, I hit up Doug. I'm like, hey, man, what do you want to do for the cover of the record? And I must have sent this picture to Doug six months ago before this even hit. And then Doug in 10 minutes sent this picture over. We're like, yeah, that's that is <laughs> that's so badass. I mean, it just screams Trace Andres <laughs> and it screams Easy Top and all that. And uh, when I sent it over to Thomas, um, he's like, you know, wow. Okay, and everything like that. And then like three days later, the art department is sending me all these emails like, we love this cover. This is the greatest cover on earth. I said, it's the best looking guy in the band. So, you know. <laughs> and he is too. The, yeah. One of the prettiest dogs I've ever met. When he was a puppy, when I met him, he was the cutest. He looked prettier than Lassie. 
he had a face that was just like dogs yeah, don't perfect. have faces like this they don't have faces like that that perfect you know he's a beautiful dog yeah he's a good boy and doug is uh we're always spoiling him but this dog has definitely died and gone him so yeah all dose man it's wet there it is there it is yeah and it, and it and it works for the album it just goes with the yeah, album it does it you know it, it really did when i saw when you ZZ top Mm -hmm. When you said, when you guys said, what should we name it? That immediately came to me. It was like, I was just sitting at my desk and I pulled me, I pulled up the text message and I, went, I just scrolled down and I went, Bing, and said, how about this? And I wasn't even thinking twice about it. I was just kind of going, yeah, what about this? Just like, yeah. it wasn't like, oh, this is it. You know, I kind of did it as a joke just to see what anybody say, you know? And then oh, well, you know what? I mean, when I saw it, I'm like, Oh, well, really? Oh, hell yeah. I started thinking <laughs> of the record and then the whole vibe. And I mean, you know, again, we're huge CZ Top fans. And um, mm -hmm. uh, that came out uh, and it came out amazingly cool. It's, me and my brother actually were on the road with CZ Top for a while and stuff like that. And it's funny because that's how I remember him. I can almost look at that picture with Wyatt and look at it and it's like, that's how I remember CZ Top. So <laughs> it, it, it's really cool fun yeah i was pretty broken up about dusty i know uh, he had some health issues for quite a while but they were still he was still out there even just yeah. recently playing. Uh, and then mean, that's uh houston's uh familiar ground for you uh Doug. oh uh, yeah that this record i channel well both grinder blues for me when it comes to approaching bass has always been du uh, uh dusty mm -hmm. you know i mean i'm trying you know i put myself in it and other people that i've been influenced by but dusty is a prerequisite you know and first thing i thought about as soon as uh scott starts to drum beat him go what would dusty play here i mean i literally that's what i that's that's this band you know so um and when i started first playing bass in 72 71 is when that album came out so i studied that bass uh and i learned to play like you know play those licks on the first few records just because i sat down on my bed with my bass going to boom 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 and i thought this is just so cool he's just going boom and it grooves and it was so much fun and uh, it just, was to know, blast. just to know he's gone is kind of sad too you know he's so young also sam taylor our king's x manager uh, used to work for ZZ Top and Bill Ham, who managed ZZ Top from the beginning, is his first cousin. So we're kind of in that family. And, you know, I never met the drummer or Dusty, but I know Billy and I hung out with him and, you know, we, we talk and stuff. So it's kind of it's kind of closer to home than, than I thought, you know. Yeah, of course, we're yeah, suffering right. a lot of losses, man. We're losing some of our heroes and our greats. So keep taking Charlie care Watts, yourself. are you kidding me? Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. Neil Pert, you know, and uh, Charlie Watts and the whole thing. And it's, what's crazy about it is, is that Neil Pert's dead. Yeah, Neil Pert died, man. Dude, so, many so, many like I, so many people, so many people, so many people are dying that I can't keep up. Yeah, I really cool. can't. Well, you know what's, because what, well, we're, what's it's funny about it is, well, is I'm in this okay. drummer circle. You know, I mean, I'm in a drummer circle with, mm. you know, that like. I know a lot of heavyweight drummers, man, and and was and, and I just get downwind for a second, like this guy's sick, and then the next week they drop. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like mm -hmm. it's an ongoing thing. And uh, yeah, the Neil Peart thing was really a surprise. I heard like a week before that that he had brain cancer, and then all of a sudden he, he just died from it. And these, you know, this I, comes from some. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I think right. about I I think about it this way: all of us who have grandparents, that's those are the people who those are our rock stars those are our heroes they're that old so it's 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 there you know lemmy died when he was 70 which was like wow and it's like it's that time between 70 and 80 you know and the ones that live longer you don't hear much about them they just kind of go off into the <laughs> sunset and, and live their lives and be at peace you know and then all of a sudden like so-and-so dies at 91 or, or 99 or something you know and you go oh wow they're still around but man Hell, it's i can't just... believe that uh buddy guys out there 91 man yeah he is he's bless buddy guys heart. doing shows 91 it's crazy bless his heart wow. yeah tony bennett just retired at 95 and not because of his voice. He actually wanted to keep touring. And I think his other health issues were like, mm. 
why don't you retire a guy? It's been like, you know, a, you know, a, he's been sick since he's like 14 and he's 95. And they were like, you shouldn't do mm, it. Yeah. Still sing, though. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. I want to, I want to do something where it's a worldwide tour and we end up playing Wembley arena at the end of the tour. And then I'm done. Never again. I'll just go. I can stay home now. I got enough no. money. I got enough money. I can do anything I want, and I made it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Doug. If anybody in the world deserves that, it's you, buddy. It's, uh, that's no kidding. I feel that deeply, and uh, thanks. I mean thanks. that you're for everything, not just King's X, but uh, yeah, I really bless you. You're one of the good dudes out there, and I appreciate you. And and now I appreciate Scott, who's my new buddy. So well, uh, yeah. right on. Right on. cheers, man. Uh, as we wind this down, I want to give you guys back the rest of your day. And uh, and again, I'm just so grateful to chat with you. Uh, obviously, the world is insane right now, but I mean, I hope you guys will get back out on the road at some point and tour if that's possible. We'll always go out in the ro- road as long as soon as it's safe. That's yeah. the way I can put it. As soon as it's safe, we're going to be open to trying to open all those doors we can. Yeah, we're very uh, much into touring, but that's Doug's got it right on the money is that it's got to be safe. It's got to be the right uh, situation. And I know the labels uh, putting some things together. So when we know you'll be the first. One. Awesome. I, I will be. I'm, I'm tied in with that PR pipeline All right. so we get awesome. to share that news. And, uh, you know, obviously you guys got other stuff going on. Is anything else you want to share that's coming up aside from Grinder Blues, beside promoting this record? Scott's got, uh, a, new uh, yeah. Scott's got a new record coming out. I do. I got a new solo record coming out. I'm pretty excited about. Um, and stay tuned for those details. I got to say, I'm very familiar with Doug's solo projects and that's coming out. And that is another phenomenal piece of art. Um, my stuff is really singer songwriter coming from like, you know, uh, Springsteen, Fogarty, that whole thing. That's what it is. Doug is really creating some amazing art still at his age. That is amazing. I mean, it's, it's really great. So you got to get a copy of that one. One of these days it will come out soon. <laughs> and also also new king's x record we have oh the new king's yet. x record come on let me say dougie let me okay. say okay. it's 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 a royals royce not only is it produced and mixed incredibly uh for any king's x fan and things like that you're not going to be disappointed i'm not kidding it is uh, i've always been a fan of king's x and this is a phenomenal record phenomenal awesome i i have one doug centric question to go out on and i hope you'll allow me I was wondering, Doug, if you uh, would ever be interested in writing your memoirs, because I love the Greg Prado book about King's X's history. I thought it was beautifully done, very unique in all of these music, uh, you know, biographies and band biographies. I thought it was really special that they got everybody's input and quotes and stuff from everybody. But I was wondering if you would ever write your own memoirs someday. Um, You know, I would love to do that. I'd probably call it Doug Adventures. You know, and just give little stories of all the little things that I've done that just people would go, wow, that's pretty cool. Or, you know, just things that luckily you get to do or get to see. Like we were in um, uh, Czechoslovakia or somewhere over there touring. And I remember we watched the planes flying over to Bosnia to bomb them. And I was out front with a guy who was half Bosnian and half the other people and both sides of his family and and both countries or both people are fighting each other and he's standing there in the middle going uh, my relatives are on both sides just little things uh, like you know or when berlin wall came down you know we we went and saw it like a week after you know and things like that uh, or, or princess Di when she was killed we were in london at the time and the tour bus goes through the city and there were flowers everywhere you could barely drive the car uh i remember right after the earthquake uh we came out here to play and they didn't want us to play in san francisco because it was two days later and they were afraid that the that the uh, the tour him would fall or something you know or, or one other i got one other story um when the riots the la riots were happening we flew in to do the dennis miller show and we couldn't fly out because there was so much smoke in the city from the fires I I got I just love to tell those stories. This is just just many of them. We just you got to call it uh, getting down with Dougie. <laughs> getting but down I with have, Dougie and all the stories, man. I do have a book called uh, "Life Is What You Make It" by Doug Pinnock. If you it, it's on Amazon, if you want to check it out, it's it's basically the the darker side of my life where I was the woe is me. But it's all stories about all the stuff that happened in my life. I'm a more positive person now, and I'm looking to encourage not depressed people so 
but read it. You check it out, and then you'll know all about me, all the bad stuff and the good stuff. All right. Well, we're all those things, all of us, right? We're not one thing. We're everything. And, no, we're uh, not. I'm really glad we had this time together, guys. I love Eldos coming out on Metalville Records and uh, Grinder Blues, man. Congratulations, Doug and Scott. And uh, props to you, bro, Scott, as well, on a great job done. And uh, I'll catch up with both of you soon on your next things coming out. I right on, right on. Sounds great, man. Right on. Hey, we'll talk again.